everybody, I'm Steve, and today I got a request on how to do stroboscopic photography. Um, it sounds a little complicated, but I promise you it's not. Um, today we're also going to be in my studio, well, Hype Studios, but I'm one of the owners, so my studio for all intents and purposes. Uh, also technically sponsoring this video, so if you're a photographer near the uh, Upland, Inland Empire, or even Los Angeles area, uh, feel free to give us a, uh, a check out at uh, hivestudios.com. There's a link in the description down below uh, if you're interested. And now let's kind of get into exactly what stroboscopic photography even is, if you couldn't tell from the thumbnail. Stroboscopic photography is essentially long exposure photography with just one little difference, and that's in the name. Strobes. Stroboscopic photography. So instead of just leaving your shutter open for a long amount of time, you're going to have it open for a long time and fire off strobes multiple times. And because you're doing it multiple times, that means you can't use the little ugly flash on top of your camera if you have one built in. If you've done long exposure photography at night, you're probably familiar with a car driving right through your picture and ruining, you know, either that exposure a couple minutes or even that perfect shot. Um, the difference with this is you're going to be firing off the strobes multiple times like we talked about and you're kind of going to get the background and the subject in the same image. Basically, if I'm here, you're going to get me and if I move over here, you're going to get me um, in those strobes. The difference is that since the strobes are bouncing off the background, you're also getting that background light. So I'm essentially going to be a transparent ghost over here and over here. But if I only move this much, obviously there's a big part in the center that's overlapping. That part never got the background light uh, to the sensor, so that's going to be more solid. And now let's move over to the studio and, well, we're in the studio. We'll move over to the psych wall portion of the studio and we'll go over everything a little bit more um, than just the close-up of my face. Welcome to the psych wall part of Hive. Uh, yes, I am wearing socks, don't judge me. I'm trying to keep this from getting scuffed for as long as I can because it is pure white. So now, step by step, how do you do stroboscopic photography? Well, first, find your location. Uh, dark background works good with white subjects or light subjects and vice versa. Basically, you just want a lot of contrast. Uh, I used a white psych wall with a white dog, so, um, you know, you don't have to. But I also used lighting to make the background dark uh, while illuminating the, the white dog. Step two. Put your camera on a tripod. It's really, really, really important that your camera stay perfectly still because even though you have a moving subject, your background is static. So if you're using your finger to hit the button or something like that, it's just not going to turn out as nicely as if your camera was still on a tripod and untouched. Which brings me to the optional uh, step 2.5. Put your camera in bulb mode instead of manual and use a remote trigger. It uh, doesn't have to be anything crazy expensive. Uh, if you take a look at mine, you see that I use top notch equipment with uh, top notch electrical tape holding it together. So using bulb mode and a remote trigger lets you keep the shutter open just as long as you want so you don't have to kind of guess and estimate and then if your subject moves a little bit faster, then it's you know just open longer and gathering unnecessary light on the sensor. Um, bulb is really good, and then when you have the remote trigger, you don't have to worry about your finger causing camera shake, even if your camera is mounted to that tripod, by hitting the button, because even that does do a little bit of camera shake. Three, put your flash exactly where you want it. Make sure that you, it works well with the background and the lighting and the subject and everything looks perfectly good. Step four, test it. Open your shutter, fire off a few flashes, 
and make any adjustments necessary. Aperture, ISO, lighting, positioning, anything you need to do to make the photo look great. And remember, with every single flash, the background is going to be gathering more light into the sensor. So try to figure out how many flashes you need to accomplish your goal and test it with that amount. Step five, do it. Open your shutter, have the subject move through the frame in a consistent motion while routinely and consistently firing the flash at regular intervals. When you're done, review the image, make sure you got it right, and if you have to do it again, do it again. I used a dog. I did not get it right on my first shot. He was very uncooperative. So now we're gonna go back to my computer in my office and see exactly what I did and I'll give you the final image and some of the test shots that I did while I was kind of tweaking it and getting it right and testing the whole, uh, the whole technique to get ready for the video. Okay, so here are, uh, first here's some of the images that I did to test it or to try, uh, like with my dog. Uh, the first one here was one of my very first little attempts and you can see that I'm actually holding the bulb open with the shutter right there. I'm just seeing how the background will look and the answer was not good. And now this one, I'm just, you know, kind of, again, testing, seeing what it'll look like and seeing, you know, what I want to do. I, I was at first attempting a, you know, kind of a, I was going to use myself and I had a, I thought maybe dark would work against a light background and it does and you can always invert the colors if you want to. So if you only have a white background to work with, that's fine. Uh, here's where I kind of figured out my lighting a little bit better. Um, this one wasn't horrible, but you know, it, it illustrates the effect just fine. But you know, you can see the, the trigger in my hand and it's not the greatest looking image. Again, here's just, you know, I was going to just turn and walk a little bit. And here's where my dog decided to veer off course and instead of walking across, he decided that he was gonna go uh, directly under the tripod. So that didn't really work out too well either. And then of course, when he decided that he just wasn't having it. But the final image here, um, this was the one that I like. I've cleaned it up a little bit in Photoshop. Um, I did up the contrast a little bit you know, you, you always kind of got to play with them until you make them right. Um, but the settings for this image, uh, my camera was at ISO 100. The shutter speed was three seconds. I did use the, uh, the bulb and I, had, I was holding the remote open, so I didn't even know until it ended because I was more focused on the dog. And the aperture was set to 5.6. Because uh, I knew roughly where he was going to be, so it didn't have to be a huge depth of field, uh, which is, you know, uh, pretty good because my the flash was also set to go pretty dim, at least as low as it could go. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up either here or on my website uh, or any kind of social media. I get notifications for them all, so you can get in contact with me. And if you learn something, I'm so happy. And if I need to do uh, anything else or you want to learn something else, again, please let me know and have a great one.